So just uh, a couple of things at the top here. Uh, as you've no doubt heard, last night, U.S. Special Operations Forces, under the control of U.S. Central Command, conducted a counterterrorism mission in northwest Syria that resulted in the death of ISIS leader Abu Ibrahim al-Hashimi al-Karashi, also known as Haji Abdullah. Uh, Haji Abdullah was a very hands-on leader um, and uh, involved uh, in, in many day-to-day -day operations of ISIS and certainly uh, uh, keenly interested in uh, restoring uh, the, the uh, lethality uh, and the uh, higher op tempo uh, that ISIS had once did, enjoyed. Uh, so his death, we believe, dealt a significant blow uh, to ISIS. Uh, you've already heard from the president this morning, uh, and I think you've probably seen a statement that Secretary Austin put out uh, joining the president and commending the professionalism and the skill, the readiness exhibited by our forces in this operation, particularly with the extensive regard towards safeguarding innocent life that we knew was located there at the target's location. And while the cowardly actions of Haji Abdullah and a small number of his followers resulted in the death, the tragic death of at least three innocent civilians, the calculated efforts of our forces succeeded in protecting more than 10 women, children, and babies. Now, these efforts in included uh, a deliberate decision by the president to execute a raid on the location as opposed to an airstrike, despite the additional risk that that decision put on our forces. And as I think you've probably seen, uh, in, a, in addition to all that, as they got to the site, they called out to everyone in the, lo in, in the building uh, giving them an, uh, an opportunity to leave peacefully, quietly, uh, and uh, for Abdullah to surrender himself. Of course, he chose a different route. While there were no U.S. casualties, one of our helicopters did suffer a mechanical failure early on in the infiltration phase of the operation. The helicopter was able to depart the target location and land at another location further away, off-site. But uh, ultimately, it was determined that uh, uh, further use of the helicopter uh, was not practical uh, and, in fact, could be dangerous. Uh, and so General McKenzie made the decision that the helicopter should be abandoned uh, and, uh, and detonated so it could be destroyed in place. Um, so. Moving forward, I'm sure you've got lots of questions. I'll do the best I can to answer them. I want to remind that this is an operation that is not yet 24 hours old. So while we will provide as much context as we can to you, um, uh, I suspect, as you all have covered these kinds of things before, that we will continue to learn more information uh, as time goes on. We are still reviewing the results of this operation. We are still uh, going through the, the after-action process that we always do. We will do the best we can to... Uh, to provide you as much context. I also would add, and I'm saying this as a bit of a disclaimer here before we begin taking questions, that there are still operational security matters that we're just not going to be able to speak to. Uh, we obviously take these kinds of missions very seriously. We obviously want to be able to continue to conduct these kinds of operations because ISIS remains a threat. So there's going to be some information um, uh, that you will want to know that we are simply not going to be able to provide so that we can preserve our flexibility to conduct these sorts of operations going forward. With that, Bob. Hey, John, thank you. A couple of questions on the civilians. Um, if I heard you, did you, I hear you correctly that you said you verified three civilians were killed? And also, could you elaborate on, uh, perhaps explain a little further what Secretary Austin meant in his written statement about looking into the possibility that U.S. actions may have resulted in harm to civilians. What exactly is he referring to? There? So we know that uh, uh, that when Abdullah uh, detonated an explosive device, which obviously killed him, uh, uh, we know that there were uh, three people on that third floor with him uh, that were also killed. Uh, his wife. Uh, and two children. Um, 
Uh, and uh, so that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the, the, the three. Uh, we also know, as I said, that uh, we were able to safely evacuate 10 individuals, six from the first floor, an adult male, an adult female, uh, and, uh, and uh, four children, and then four children from the second floor, uh, which our forces were able to safely get uh, to get uh, out of the building on that second floor where uh, one of Abdullah's lieutenants engaged our forces. Uh, um, uh, actually, one of his lieutenants and the lieutenant's wife uh, firing back at our forces. Uh, they were killed. Uh, and uh, and it, it appears as if uh, a, a child was also killed on that second floor. And as for your second question, I mean, um, we're, we're always mindful of the potential for civilian harm or harm to, to innocent life. And while um, the strong indications are here is that, that, uh, that, that the life, that the lives taken in this operation, the lives of innocents taken in this operation were caused by uh, Ab Abdullah and his decision to blow him, himself up and everybody else with him on that third floor, as well as the resistance of his lieutenant on the second floor, um, uh, we're willing to take a look, to just examine and make sure um, that uh, there wasn't any action that we might have taken that, that, that could have also uh, caused harm to, to innocence. You mean indirectly, or do you mean directly? In any way. I think we're just going to take a look and see. But, uh, but right now, uh, the strong, strong indications are that uh, uh, to the degree there's a loss of innocent life, it's, it's loss caused by Mr. Abdullah and his lieutenant. You're quite confident on the three, that's only three people that were... That is the, that's what we have right now, Bob. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you what I can right now, and I think you know that information can change over time. That's what we have right now. Yeah, Pierre. Additional information on the team that executed the operation? I'm sorry? Uh, any additional information about the team that executed the operation? No. I don't have any more information about the team that executed the operation. Any more details about what kind of support or uh, cooperation that the SDF provided to the operation? The SDF were helpful uh, in, in, uh, um, in enabling uh, our ability to conduct this operation, uh, but I'm not going to go into more detail about uh, what that assistance looked like. I will remind Pierre that this was a U.S. operation conducted by U.S. forces only. Jen. Um, John, will anyone get a reward for justice reward for this tip? And how long have you had this intelligence? Also, you referred to the three innocent civilians, but would the wife of Haji Abdullah be considered an innocent civilian? Uh, you know, I, I think I'm just going to leave it the way I characterized it, Jen. Um, um, and again, we're going to continue to review and look at this. Um, I, I think uh, I think I'm just going to leave it the way I described it. And as for the reward, uh, I don't have any updates on that. Um, yet, yet there was a ten million dollar reward uh, uh, on his head, um, but I don't have any updates on whether that award can or, or will, will be claimed. And then on the intelligence, I would just tell you that um, uh, this operation was literally months in the planning, um, and of course. A, a strong basis for being able to conduct an operation like this is valuable intelligence, intelligence that comes from multiple streams. And again, without getting into more detail than that, um, uh, th there was, uh, as obviously because uh, of the success of the operation, I mean, the, the intelligence was a, a, a mosaic that allowed us the, the level of, of awareness and fidelity of information to be able to conduct this in the way we did. For the Abbey Gate bombing, uh, I don't have a direct connection to speak to in, in terms of that. However, he's the he was the leader of ISIS, and it was an ISIS K attack. But uh, what we do know is he was uh, a hands-on kind of leader. Uh, uh, we know that um, uh, that he certainly had knowledge of and uh, uh, was it uh, at least maintaining 
a level of situational awareness uh, during the Hasaka prison break last week. We know that he was directly involved in the massacre and the uh, and the rape of innocent uh, uh, Yazidis back in uh, 2014. Um, uh, this is a this is a man that we should all be happy is no longer walking on the face of the earth. Court. I got a bunch. Did you get DNA of him and have positive DNA? Is that how you were able to identify? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Can you, if you got a bunch, let's yeah. take okay. one at a time. Great. All right. Uh, we were able to identify uh, his body through fingerprints and DNA analysis. On site? On site. Okay. Uh, can you well, explain? The, fingerprint, uh, the fingerprints were on site. Uh, it took a little bit longer to get the, the DNA analysis, so it was a combination. Can you give us a little more detail about this firefight that occurred sort of towards the end of the, the two-hour time frame that they were on the ground there, some locals or something? What, what was that? And a couple of people were killed? Yeah, uh, towards, towards the end of the operation, um, uh, there were um, there was a, a small group of individuals approaching the compound. They, they, they were appropriately deemed as hostile, um, and they were engaged. They, they were engaged... Uh, 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 and we know that in that engagement, uh, two of them were killed. Um, and that resulted in the end of that hostile activity. The remaining uh, individuals left the site. Were they engaged on the ground or via air, by the air? Uh, I, I don't know exactly. I, I know that at, at least some engagement came from the air, but I can't be sure that there wasn't some engagement from the ground. Uh, can you say, do you know who the lieutenant was? You mentioned he and his wife were, were killed. I mean, was this someone relatively senior? It, it was a, it was a, a senior lieutenant of uh, Abdullah. I don't have uh, the, the name. Uh, you, you, could say, you could say it was a, a deputy. Uh, and then um, can you, was this mission a, a kill or capture mission? Was there ever an effort to try to take him alive? Uh, I, you know, without getting into the specifics of uh, 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 of the orders, this it was a raid against uh, Abdullah, um, um, and uh, again, he decided to kill himself uh, and others uh, before uh, coming into direct contact with the the assault force. Uh, the, he did not fight back. Um, uh, the 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 objective was to finish his leadership of ISIS, and that was achieved. And then finally, uh, the question I'm sure all of us are wondering, was there a dog involved? What was its name, and do you have a photo? I do not know. I do not know, and I do not know. Can you take that question? I'll take all three. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Louis. Uh, John, why did the mission take two hours? For what, what was the process? I mean, was there a calculated process to get civilians out of this yeah. building? Was that a part of the delay? Because it sounds like two hours on the ground is quite a long time for the, one of these kind of missions. So it's a great question, Louis. First of all, the plan was to have them there for two hours. Uh, f from the get-go, the, the plan was for a, a two hours on site. Um, and it speaks to the level of care uh, that US Special Operations Forces used in this mission, uh, which was designed to preserve innocent life. Um, I mean, uh, to, to go to the site as they did, to f first of all, it was securing and isolating the site. Then it was uh, to get innocence and, quite frankly, to encourage Mr. Abdullah to leave the site. Um, and that's why they used a bullhorn and, and made several call outs. Uh, beseeching everybody in that building uh, to leave. Um, and that takes some time, too. You want to make sure you make a good faith effort to do that, and we did. Um, they were engaged. At, there was a, a, an explosion on the third floor and engagement, uh, uh, gunfire from the, from the building, and then they, they, had, they, they went in. Um, uh, and obviously, you want to process the site as best you can, get as much information as you can. Um, and of course, uh, in this in this regard, because he chose to end his life the way he did, uh, uh, to be able to um, uh, identify uh, and then safely uh, leave leave the site. So, honestly, from from soup to nuts, the original plan was to have them there uh, for two hours, and they were there for just about exactly two hours. I think the characterization has been by other officials that um, 
that he detonated this explosive very early on after the arrival of the troops. I mean, do you have a, a notion of how quickly he did that? Or was this a long, drawn-out process? Yeah, I don't have the exact minute-by-minute TikTok. Uh, but that characterization, as I understand it, is is accurate. Uh, it wasn't long after they isolated and secured the site and began the callouts that there was a large explosion on the third floor, which turned out to have, of course, been uh, Abdullah uh, killing himself and uh, and the family members that were with him on the third floor, and 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 putting at significant risk everybody else in that building. May I have one more, please. Um, yeah. The the Kabul air drone strike and the repercussions that have happened. Since then, we saw the secretary issue his guidance uh, recently. Um, did that factor in at all into the notion of that we're going to go in with uh, ground troops in an air, uh, a raid as opposed to a drone strike? What, what, what factored into that decision, Louis, was our longstanding practice of trying to minimize civilian harm, N not what happened on the 29th of August or on any other day. Um, but, but a long-standing desire to minimize civilian harm, and the president made that decision. Um, and it was a significant decision because it involved putting our troops uh, at much greater risk in order to do it this way. Um, uh, but that's in keeping with a, a long-standing desire by us to, to try to minimize civilian harm as much as possible. Orrin. Uh, just a follow-up question on civilian casualties. You said there were three on the third floor, the wife and two kids, but you also said it appears as if a child was also killed on the second floor. Yeah. Wouldn't that be four? Well, you know I was referring was when I said when I was referring to the three, I was I was talking about the context of him killing himself. And the, who, who killed the child on the second floor? I, again, I'm not going to get into a blow by blow on every single. Uh, uh, event here. We are still processing this, Oren. It's not even 24 hours old. We're giving you as much information as we can uh, right now. Information will continue to flow in, and as we can share it with you, we will. And one follow-up on a different But topic. Let, it, let it not be forgotten, though, that we also, you know, saved, helped save 10 lives, including four kids on that second floor. So 10, 10 uh, uh, people, mostly children, were able to get out of that building safely because of the care that was put into that mission. Uh, one follow-up question. Did any of those who took part in the planning for either the bin Laden raid or the, um, or the Baghdadi raid take part in the operation or execution of this raid as well? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, about the children, uh, those who are killed or those who are saved, who are they, do you think? Like, who, who, are, the civilians in the who are the civilians in the building? Again, I, I want to be careful here, as I don't, we don't have perfect knowledge of, of every single individual uh, that was killed in this uh, in this raid, uh, we know Haji Abdullah was killed. We know his lieutenant that was on the second floor was killed. Um, we know that when he blew himself up on the third floor, three others went with him, um, and uh, we know of at least one uh, uh, child that was killed on the second floor. Um, uh, but I, you know, I, I don't, I don't have much more information to give you than that. And, and are, are there any uh, civilians under U.S. custody right now? Where, where did the the, the, the saved ones go after the operation? There is no, there are, there, there's nobody in U.S. custody as a result of this raid. Just a follow-up on the helicopter. What was the mechanical issue with the helicopter? I would describe the mechanical issue as a drivetrain issue uh, that rendered it uh, not usable for future flight in the operation. What, did it get any fire or some something? It, 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 it didn't catch fire. It was a drivetrain issue. Um, uh, it didn't crash. Um, it, it landed safely at an alternative location. Um, uh, they looked at it to determine whether it could be fixed and, and, and continued to be used in, in the operation, and it was determined that, that that was not possible. So General McKenzie ordered that it be uh, detonated and destroyed on site. All right? I haven't gotten any... Yeah, go ahead. In addition to the people involved, was there other material like digital media that were recovered that could be useful for us? Without getting into details, Bob, I think uh, you, you know that uh, uh, it's common practice when we conduct raids of this uh, kind to try to, um, uh, to, to collect uh, information um, and, uh, and material that, that might help us uh, in, in the continued 
prosecution of these kinds of operations and operations against ISIS, and I think that's as far as I'll go. I'll yes no. uh, just tell you it's common practice for us to, to try to, uh, uh, to examine whether there's usable material that, that can help us uh, in future operations, and I think I'll leave it at that. Carla Babb. Hey, thanks, John, for doing this. I have three questions just to clear up some things. If those who were saved are not in U.S. custody, where are they? Are they in SDF custody? Were they left at the scene? Can you clarify that? Um, clarification number two, please. When you said the the hostiles that were coming at the end, does that is it safe to assume that these hostile actors had weapons and they were engaged, as you were kind of referring to with Courtney, they were engaged with an airstrike? Um, and then number three, uh, VOA has spoken to the SDF, and they said that the uh, the SDF says that U.S. launched the operation from SDF territory. Can you confirm that? And can you confirm that they were helping with the intelligence and the tracking of um, the ISIS leader? Thanks. Um, there's nobody in custody, Carla. Um, so there's there's nobody that there's nobody to tell you that they're in custody. That uh, and certainly no U.S. Uh, there, there's nobody in U.S. custody for sure. Um, on the uh, on the the engagement at the, towards the end of the operation, uh, the the other two that I talked about, um, there were clear indications that, that there was hostile intent. I'm not going to get into it uh, more detail than that. Clear indications that there was hostile intent, uh, and they were engaged, um, and their compadres left after that engagement. Um, and then three on. Uh, SDF, we appreciate the support that we got from the SDF. Um, I'm, I'll leave it to the SDF to describe it in ways that the, that they deem fit. I'm not going to uh, to talk about it in any more detail than that. Okay, uh, Jeff Shogel. Thank you. Can you say what type of special operations forces were involved in the raid, such as SEALs, Delta, or Rangers? going to describe them in any greater specificity than I have. U.S. Special Operations Forces under the control of U.S. Central Command. Tony Capaccio. Hi, John. Two, que two quick questions. What happened to his body? Uh, was it carried away like what the U.S. did with bin Laden's body, or was it too badly damaged to do anything with? And two, an administration official told reporters today that this had been planned for a long, long time. The president had been presented in December with a tabletop model of the compound or the building. Why was the raid now versus maybe two or three weeks ago or even a month ago? Can you give any uh, light, shed any light on that? Yeah, his body was left at the site. Um, as for the timing, uh, you, it is correct. This was a, a mission long planned, months in the planning, as I mentioned to Jen. Um, but um, look, you, you have to build uh, enough context uh, around uh, the individual's pattern of life, and you have to factor in uh, external factors that that you don't get to control, like the weather. Um, so lots of things go into making a decision about when you when you execute a raid of this complexity and this danger. Um, and there were a lot of factors that had to line up uh, to be just right. You have to you know make sure that your intelligence is solid and that the that, that the individual that you're going after is in fact at the location you believe him to be and that all the external factors, um, uh, the, uh, not just the weather, but uh, uh, the um, uh, ability to, uh, to operate um, at that particular time of day and to have enough visibility, all those things factor in. So it was a multiple factors. Um, it all came together uh, such that uh, this was uh, the best window to execute this mission. And I would remind you that um, it's not like we were just sitting on our hands for those months. I mean, these, as you probably saw in the Secretary's statement, I mean, these special operations forces conducted dozens of rehearsals uh, to make sure uh, that they could get this exactly right. Okay. Um, Mike Brest. Hi, Mr. Kirby. Thanks for taking my question. I'm hoping you can provide a little insight uh, into where ISIS stands right now, uh, the threat they pose between the raid at the prison two weeks ago uh, and uh, Abdullah's assassination. Where do things stand both in Syria as well as globally? 
Well, I tell you what, they're, they're leaderless today. Um, and that's a significant blow. Uh, this is not something that we believe ISIS is going to be able to just get over real quickly and real easily. Um, that said, uh, they, uh, they are not the force that they were uh, in 2014. Uh, as we all remember that, um, uh, their growth and rapid acceleration uh, across Iraq and, and Syria. Uh, th this is a uh, – ISIS is not the, 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 the threat of the same significant nature that they were back then, but they still remain a viable threat. And we've talked about that many times, um, that this is a group that wants to reconstitute its strength, wants to continue to attack and kill and maim and terrorize. Um, and uh, – uh, and uh, Haji Abdullah was was very much involved in trying to resuscitate the group and to grow their capabilities. Um, they remain, as we've said many times, they remain uh, dangerous. They remain a, a threat to our national security, to the lives of other innocents. Um, and uh, we're going to, as the secretary said in a statement today, we're going to stay at it. Uh, Travis Tritton. Hey, John, thanks. A uh, couple quick questions. Um, first, on the efforts to get civilians out of the building, you said that they had uh, called out to them with a bullhorn. Can you say specifically how long they gave civilians to leave the building? Um, and secondly, when we look at photos of the compound and we see the damage to the building, was that primarily from the suicide bomb or were U.S. munitions used on that building? Thanks. The damage you see in the picture with the th the third floor floor collapsed onto the second and even uh, even more than that and that was caused by uh, Abdullah igniting an explosive device which uh, as I said killed himself and his family. Um, and as for time, look, I, Travis, I don't have a minute by minute. Uh, there were numerous calls made uh, uh, to encourage everyone in the building to leave. Numerous calls were made, um, and uh, at some point, uh, not too far into the operation, uh, uh, Ab Abdullah exploded this device, um, uh, and that precipitated uh, more activity by uh, at least one shooter from the building. That led to U.S. forces going in. And um, to your point about you know how much time do we give people that, I would re remind that um, that that. U.S. forces actually extricated four children from the second floor after they went into the building. So the efforts to save uh, the lives of, of, uh, of innocents uh, wasn't just in the opening gambit here with the bullhorn. I mean, it was it, it was well into uh, the operation. It was something that was was ever present on their minds. Um, Mike Glenn. Yeah, John, thanks much. Tony answered one question, but do you know, do you believe that this raid might have uh, prevented any future uh, specific terrorist mission that they were going to carry out? You were kind of breaking up, Mike. I think we, your question was, do we have I information that that uh, his death has disrupted a specific attack? Is that what you asked? Yes, that's it. Yes, I don't that's have it. information that suggests that, uh, Mike, but I would remind that th th this was the leader of ISIS, and, and he was a very hands-on leader. He was involved in uh, helping direct uh, a lot of operations. So we have no doubt uh, that, uh, that his death uh, will have a, a blow uh, on ISIS and, uh, and their potential to conduct future operations. I do want to remind that they, they, they are still a threat, uh, and, we're, and we're not – nobody's taken – uh, you know, a victory lap here. Uh, we're we're going to stay at this. They still remain a threat. They still uh, espouse this uh, uh, extreme ideology and this intent to kill, to maim, to terrorize. Uh, and so we're going to stay focused on it. Dan Lamoth. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, hoping maybe we can uh, draw you out and flesh out some details on some of these tabletop exercises. Uh, it sounds like they went back at least as far as December uh, involving, you know, senior commanders and that sort of thing. Can you lay out a bit of what this looked like in terms of how far back it goes, who would involve, that kind of thing? Thank you. Yeah, Dan, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go into more detail than I already have. Again, this was months in the planning, um, several months in the planning. Um, it included uh, actual physical rehearsals, as I said, dozens 
uh, by the special operations uh, forces, uh, as well as you can imagine, um, some tabletop planning as well. But I don't have a TikTok of exactly uh, how all that process uh, worked out. It was extensively planned, extensively resourced, um, and quite frankly, extensively informed over the course of several months. Jen. I could take you to Russia, Ukraine. Um, there's a report that the U.S. has evidence that Russia has developed a plan approved at the highest levels in Moscow to create a pretext for invading Ukraine by falsely pinning the attack on Ukrainian forces. That could involve alleged casualties in eastern Ukraine, but also inside Russia. It's being reported by the Washington Post. Is that report accurate? Is Has that intelligence been declassified? And what can you tell us? What I can tell you is, that, first of all, you know, we've discussed this idea of false flags by the Russians before. We've made no secret of that. Um, uh, and we do have information uh, that it is that, that, that the Russians are likely to want to fabricate a pretext uh, for an invasion, uh, which, again, is right out of their playbook. Uh, one option uh, is uh, the Russian government, uh, we, we think, is planning to stage a fake attack uh, by Ukrainian military or intelligence forces against Russian sovereign territory uh, or against Russian speaking people uh, th to therefore justify their action. Uh, as part of this um, fake attack, uh, we believe that Russia would produce a very graphic propaganda video, uh, which would include corpses um, and actors that would be depicting mourners uh, and images of destroyed locations uh, as well as military equipment uh, at the hands of U Ukraine or the West, even to the point where some of this equipment would be to make, made to look like it was Western-supplied Ukrainian, uh, you know, to Ukraine equipment. Um, so uh, this is, and this is just one example that we can talk about today. Uh, we're, we're watching this across the board. We, we've seen these kinds of uh, activities by the Russians in the past, and um, we believe it's important when we see it like this, and, and we can, to call it out. This is being briefed on the Hill right now? Uh, uh, I'm, part of the uh, Austin and Millie are on the Hill. They're on the Hill in a classified briefing uh, to talk about the whole spate of things we're concerned about with respect to Russia and Ukraine. Um, I won't. It's a classified briefing, so I'm obviously not going to get into an a agenda item with you here in terms of everything they're talking about. Uh, but they uh, they're both up on the Hill. Uh, communicating with members of Congress, uh, what we're seeing writ large, uh, and what we're doing about it to help our NATO allies. How do you know that it has been approved at the highest level of the Kremlin, this particular case? I would just say that the, our experience is that very little of this nature uh, is, is not approved at, at uh, the highest levels of the Russian government. And by that, you mean Putin? The highest levels of the Russian government. Uh, Kelly Meyer. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my question. I have two, if I can. Um, you mentioned the mechanical issue on the helicopter. Um, those involved okay and any other issues we aren't aware of or did everything run like clock clockwork? And the second on the U.S. Army dismissing unvaccinated soldiers, are any of them the ones deploying or on high alert to deploy to Eastern European allies around Ukraine? For you to the Army in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, who they're uh, discharging with respect to the vaccine mandate, but I suspect that there's privacy concerns there, uh, Kelly. So I, um, I, I don't want to speak for the Army, but I, I don't know that they're going to be able to give you that level of specificity. It remains a lawful order. It remains a readiness issue. The vaccines work, um, and um, we, we want everybody to, 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 to take them and to keep safe, to keep their units safe. Um, as for the... Um, helicopter crew, my understanding is that uh, they're all fine. As, as, I, as we said at the top, there were no U.S. casualties, um, and that would include uh, the helicopter crew. And it wasn't a crash landing. They landed safely. Uh, again, it was a drivetrain issue that rendered that helicopter unusable for the rest of the operation. Um, so obviously it was destroyed, but uh, the, the crew uh, are safe and sound. Sylvie from AFP. Hello, sorry, sorry. Um, can you tell us um, how many helicopters and how many US troops were involved? Yeah, Sylvia, I'm not gonna answer that question, actually. Um, uh, back when uh, 
when I opened up the press conference, I told you there's going to be some detail we're not going to be able to provide because we want to preserve our ability to continue to conduct these sorts of operations. So what I would tell you is that uh, we had exactly the force levels and exactly the resources we needed to conduct this operation, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, Tara Kopp. Thanks, John. Um, following up on Bob's question, can you confirm whether any sort of intelligence was taken from the compound, any computer drives or cell phones? And then secondly, um, to follow up on Louis's question, um, the decisions that were made in this raid, did they incorporate any lessons learned from the uh, civilian casualty report done after the August 29th strike? Thank you. I've kind of addressed that second question before as, as when, when Louis asked it. I mean, we always try to avoid civilian harm. Um, this operation was of a completely different character than the airstrike that happened on the 29th of, of August. Well, we, but in general, we always try to learn uh, from, uh, from previous missions, from previous operations. These are two completely different operations. And the desire to avoid civilian harm was baked in uh, months ago uh, into this particular plan. Um, in fact, the decision itself to conduct a raid using special operations forces speaks volumes of the degree to which uh, the president was was uh, trying to avoid civilian harm um, and quite frankly putting our forces at greater risk because of the uh, because of the decision to make a, a raid like this um, and I'm sorry but I should have written your other question down and I didn't do it oh, about the um can you confirm whether any sort of computer drives or cameras or anything else were taken from the compound that could provide actionable intelligence uh, moving forward? Yeah, look, as I told Bob, I'm, I'm not going to get into talking about intelligence matters one way or the other. It, it is common practice when we conduct raids like this that we try uh, to uh, collect material that can help us and inform us uh, in terms of our ability to, um, uh, to disrupt future attacks and to conduct future operations. And I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Nancy Youssef. Thank you. Um, I wonder if you could clarify a couple points. On the explosion that happened on the third floor, does the U.S. believe that the ISIS leader was wearing a suicide vest or that it was an explosive separate of that? And was it one explosive? Can you tell us if there was any deconfliction that happened with any other nation? And can you tell us who will lead um, the review of any possible civilian casualties by the U.S.? Thank you. There's been no decision to do a review or investigation right now, uh, Nancy. This Again, this operation is not even 24 hours old. Um, as the secretary said, we'll, we certainly are, are willing to take a look uh, to see if there's uh, any possibility that anything that we did might have caused uh, harm to innocent life. Uh, but I have no investigation or review to speak to today. Um, as for the explosion all I can tell you is what we've already said. There was a large explosion early on in the operation on the third floor, which killed uh, uh, Haji Abdullah and his family. We believe he detonated that explosion. We cannot say at this time uh, exactly what this device was. Um, so I'd leave it at that. And then you had a, your first question. I'm, I'm not good at I got to write these down. What was your first question? Uh, just to be clear, um, I was just asking when you say that oh, that review, though, that, that that you said the secretary would be doing, I'm just trying to understand who would do that. And then the question was, was there any deconfliction with any other nations in, in the run up to this? So, look, uh, we're not calling we're not calling for a review right now, Nancy. Again, this operation literally just happened last night. What the secretary said in the statement was we we're going to take a look and see if there's any possibility that any action that we conducted m might have uh, led to uh, the loss of innocent life and if there is, then we'll make decisions follow on that. But I don't want to leave you with the impression that there's an investigation in the offing here. Um, uh, that's not where we are at this point. As for deconfliction, I, I would tell you that uh, 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 appropriate de uh, deconfliction at the appropriate time uh, w was conducted uh, in order to make sure uh, that this operation could proceed safely. And I think I'll leave that Meaning there. Appropriate deconfliction, as as happens in that part of Syria, was conducted in this case. Um, let's see, uh, Helene Cooper. Hi, thanks, uh, John. Um, does this commando raid in Syria send a message of any kind to Vladimir Putin? This raid was not meant to send 
send a, a, a message to any other nation. It was meant to uh, re remove Haji Abdullah from his leadership uh, of ISIS. And uh, to that degree, it was successful. Um, and we are immensely proud of the forces that conducted this, that planned it, resourced it, executed it, rehearsed for it. Um, it, uh, it says a lot about uh, our capability uh, in counterterrorism, our focus, our continued focus on the ISIS threat, um, and our ability to, uh, 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 to plan and conduct uh, an execution of this magnitude and with this complexity um, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the utmost of professionalism and skill and, quite frankly, secrecy. Uh, I'll take a couple more. Yeah. yeah. Did the U.S. forces uh, collect any information or documents, whatever, materials from the building? Hey, I, I've already I've dealt with this question before to, uh, a couple of times. It is routine that we uh, try to collect useful material when raids of this kind are conducted. I'm not going to speak with any specificity about this one. Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate it.